Winter is coming. Winter is coming, so that means it's time for me to clean out my closet in order to make room for my cold weather clothes. My name is Kathy, and as I was doing this current closet cleanse, I've thought about all the closets I've cleaned for myself and others in the past. Although I know the best way to clean out the closet, I still make mistakes. I made this video to talk about the mistakes I made in hopes that I can help you prevent them. So before we get into mistakes, let's talk about my current setup. So you have a frame of reference. My main closet is in my master bedroom, and there I keep my day-to-day -day clothes in the closet and also in a, in a dresser. I live in Chicago, which is known for being cold, and so I have a coat closet in my guest bedroom and a portion of my, of my office is my shoe closet and where I store a few of my purses. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you my finished closet. It's a lot of work, but I'm always happy with the results. I really believe that an organized closet helps you get dressed better. That shopping in your favorite boutique feel is what I go for every time I do my closet clean out. All right, so let's get to these mistakes. The first mistake I repeatedly make on my own closet is not emptying out the whole entire closet. When I do other people's closets, I take everything out, rip it apart. But on my closet, I'm just like, ah, it don't take all that. I just really hate emptying out my closet. But in this closet cleanse, I realized that I'm doing myself a disservice by not emptying out the closet. There's a couple reasons why you should clean out your closet. Number one, it actually allows you to clean out the entire room or whatever structure your closet's in. You really don't realize how much dust builds up in there until you've taken everything out. I made a note that I need to paint my walls next time but in order to do this video I kind of just skipped past that. After you've cleaned out the closet you now have a blank slate and it's really good to just look at your closet and reevaluate. You've been looking at it for months a certain way with a certain configuration and sometimes seeing it as a blank slate allows you to envision it in other ways maybe organize it maybe add things that were missing. Be more creative. The second mistake is tied to the first mistake. Second mistake for me is not purging enough. When I purge other people's closets I am ruthless. I am like you have not worn that in the last year it doesn't fit everything but when I do my closets I get on my little high horse and I'm like I've been the same size for 20 years so I'm just gonna keep whatever I want but that's not the way to go that superficial purging is not enough because I took everything out of my closet this time I was able to touch every single item of clothing and kind of just inspect it for wear check and see if I still have tags on things everything in the past because my closet was really organized already I would just kind of look at it in place and I would only take a few things out emptying out my closet and now having to put everything in requires me to make an active decision to put this item back into my closet items that I would not purge got purged just because I actually was able to touch them and have to make an active decision on yes I'm keeping you and oftentimes the answer was no we don't need that I would say be ruthless if you're not able to do it yourself have a trusted friend who knows your style and whose opinion you trust even if it's via zoom and you're just showing them outfits like while you try them on that's fine not purging enough is a no-no we are gonna purge. I've purged people's closets sometimes and they end up being mad at me. And if I'm not angry at myself when I purge by my own closet, I know I haven't done enough. So when I was doing this closet cleanse, I had a slight attitude toward myself like, why are you taking all that? I was gonna wear that in two years. <laughs> So the third mistake I make often, and I know a lot of people do, is letting guilt stop you. Let's talk about the guilt. I had a friend who cleaned out her closet recently, and she said she felt guilty when she saw all the clothes with tags. So she felt guilty about the amount of money she had spent. It was, she felt like it was a waste. I know for myself, oftentimes I'll have like a bunch of workout clothes that are dirty, that I can't donate, that I then have to just throw away. I feel guilty. I'm like, going into a landfill, I'm a bad person. We have to reframe that guilt. With my friend, I told her, okay, you can reframe the guilt by saying that this item either one served me and I can give them to somebody else or two they just weren't the right fit for me and I can either sell them and recoup some of the money or I can just give them to somebody who actually was going to use them so that this money isn't wasted so to combat the guilt of throwing something away and having it go into the landfill I try to find other places where I can drop it off I know in the past H&M I think Zara and Abercrombie would take clothes that you know aren't suitable for donation they had bins in their stores that you could take them and they would actually recycle those items last time I checked in the city of Chicago they weren't doing that it's a little bit more freer like Texas and Arizona, these clothing recycling programs are still available. For items that you can't donate, I do urge you to find a way to recycle them. I did throw away a bunch of items just because I didn't want them sitting in my house. I did feel guilt, but I still did it because I knew that either way, I couldn't have all these items in my house. Some old t-shirts I did reuse as like rags around the house. And so instead of buying them from like a Target, I could just use t-shirts to dust and do other things. That helped me at least reframe that guilt. If you feel some type of guilt, make sure that you try to reframe it in order to move 
forward because I know for a lot of people, they start cleaning out their closet and guilt kind of stops them. We want to make sure that we can move past that guilt. So the fourth mistake is not having a disposal plan. And I think that goes hand in hand with the guilt. You need to figure out how you're gonna get these purge clothes out of your house. Give me a thumbs up if you have bags of clothes waiting to be donated. I'm trying to see something. <laughs> As I mentioned in the, in the third mistake, you need to figure out what you're gonna do with these clothes. Whether you're gonna donate the clothes, you're gonna sell them, you're gonna recycle them, or you're gonna even throw them away. Cause there's certain things like, like panties. What are you gonna do with old panties besides throw them away? There are websites that you can sell your used panties, but that's neither here nor there. Have a plan. I tend to donate, recycle, or sell. I'll have three different piles or bags and separate things. And then when I'm done, I at least have a plan of action. If you're just throwing things in a pile, you're gonna have a problem. And please, please, please do not just throw everything in a pile and give it to Goodwill or the Salvation Army. Most of the stuff that people wanna donate, they would be embarrassed to give to a family member. So you should not donate it. Don't even waste Salvation Army or Goodwill's time. Just throw it away. Because if you don't throw it away, somebody else is gonna have to throw it away. And even in a third world country, country they don't want that there's enough fast fashion that's brand new with tags that they could wear versus your old t-shirt having a plan ahead of time will help with the paralysis that sets in when you're done and you have like the bags and piles of stuff at least you know what you're gonna do another thing I've been doing I try to sell things like on Poshmark and if they don't sell on Poshmark I give them to thread up and thread up gives me money I've made $150 this year have a plan in mind get these old clothes out of your car out of your house out of your life move on don't make this mistake. The fifth mistake that I make and I feel like everybody makes is you don't allocate enough time. We all underestimate how much time it's gonna take to do our closets. Cause for me, I'm like, oh, it's gonna take me a day and it ends up being four days or a week. Allocate that time. So don't start your closet clean out like the day before people are coming to visit you cause you are gonna end up your house looking a mess. Especially for a time when you know you don't have to go anywhere for like a week or maybe two weeks and have at it. I recommend you also break it up. I have three closets. I do one at a time. This closet clean out. I did my coat closet first. I knew it was gonna be quick. It took me two hours. So all I had to do was like clean out the closet, arrange my shoe boxes, and I was good to go. My master bedroom closet clean out took me a few days and my master bedroom and even my living room looked like somebody had thrown up clothes everywhere. It looked like a fashion trap house in my house for about three or four days. It was not good. If, give yourself enough time so you end up with the result that you want, a organized closet. The sixth mistake I often see is storing random stuff in your closet. I have a friend who, when I cleaned out his closet, he had expensive bottles of liquor and as we were clean on his closet. I was like, let's take these and put them somewhere else. And he was like, nope, I'm storing this liquor in my closet. I do not recommend that. This closet is for your clothes, liquor, and other items, you know, your old ski equipment. Find someplace else to do it. Now I've been guilty. I know I sometimes put like things that should go in my laundry room in my closet. And it took me a little while to figure out like what actually should just go in my closet. It should be clothes, shoes, accessories, anything that helps you get dressed. Don't store your golf clubs in your closet. It just leads to more clutter. Part of this closet clean out is finding a place for these random items that have gravitated to your closet and that need to move somewhere else. More than likely there's a place where you it's better for you to access them think about that brainstorm that and fix that issue so the seventh mistake I make all the time is not leaving room for new items I will organize my closet and everything will be perfect in there like I will have it spaced perfectly and the moment I buy something everything's jam-packed part of this mistake is not purging enough I would often only purge until my closet was full you need at least 20% free space in your closet because let's just be truthful, you're gonna buy more clothes unless you're one of those rare people. I've met some men who buy clothes once a year. Like my dad was one of those people. I am not one of those people. I am gonna buy clothes. So I need at least 20, maybe 30%. Figure out what that number is and make sure you have room. You can always add more, but you don't wanna be in a position where you buy a new shirt and your whole closet is now jam-packed. The eighth mistake that we all are guilty of is getting distracted while doing these closet cleanouts. Yeah. I try to break mine up into like pieces. Ideally you should like empty out your whole closet, but understand that it's gonna take you time. So maybe you do a section at a time. I would tackle my dresses and take a break. Then I maybe tackle tops, take a break. But while you're working on a specific section or a portion, don't get distracted. When I cleaned out my coat clo closet, I was like, I should paint. Unfortunately, I wanted to do this video. So I knew I, would, I wouldn't have to do the painting, but I also knew <laughs> the painting was gonna distract me. I knew I was not gonna be able to paint my closets in a timely manner. So I was like, let me just move on because I am planning to get my house painted later on. Hopefully in the spring, I'll get the whole house painted. So I plan to also get my closets painted. <laughs> I was getting distracted trying to find the right video on YouTube. I had to just queue up a bunch of podcasts and listen to it rather than going on YouTube. Do not allow yourself to get distracted. Focus on the task at hand. It's not gonna be perfect. And that leads it to the ninth mistake. 
The ninth error that we all make is buying storage solutions too early in the process or not at all. I know the first time I did my closets, I went and bought some new hangers. I have huggable hangers. They're essentially those slimline velvet hangers. I bought a pack of 50 and thinking, oh, that's enough. I didn't count how many original hangers I had. So I ended up having to buy hangers, I think three times. It was a mess. What I've done is purged everything, counted, then bought my storage solutions. If you purge 50% of your closet, you're gonna need less hangers. So I always recommend is wait until you're done to purchase hangers. I do recommend you buy hangers that match. My pet peeve are people with mismatched hangers. It drives me up a wall. I don't like wire hangers. No more wire hangers. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of plastic hangers, but you have all the same color plastic hangers. I will deal with that. In terms of space saving, those slimline velvet hangers are a lifesaver. Wooden hangers are for people. They have a lot of space, but a limited closet and you want to make it look full. Most of us need the slimline hangers because we need to maximize our space. You should wait to buy storage solutions until you're done purging. I've made the mistake of buying them as I started purging and I've purchased too much or you could purchase too many. Also, once you've done the purging, you also can see what other items do I want to store in there. I have baskets in my closet that store like sunglasses and odds and ends. Those are something else you should wait to buy until you've done the purge. Regardless if it's your closet or your garage or whatever, storage solutions, you need to wait until you know what you're actually storing. If you make an educated guess, you're more than likely going to be wrong. Wait till the end. And the 10th mistake that I've made and that I'm sure you make is forgetting about easy access items. Now I'm talking about the things that you need just day in, day out. When summer comes, I move my cutoff shorts from like way in the back of the closet to someplace where I can easily access it. With this closet clean out, I'm gonna take those denim cutoff shorts and put them in the back of the closet or put them in storage and put all of my comfy sweatpants and sweaters at a place where that's easy to access. You don't wanna have to go into a bin to find your favorite t-shirt. If you know you wear something a lot, put it in a place where it's easy to access. Access. Don't put your favorite blazer someplace where you're gonna forget about it or you can't reach it. Like for me, I love dresses. So the dress section of my closet is in a very prominent location. Dresses are my default, so it's easier for me to access. It works perfectly. Somebody who's not into dresses would maybe organize their closet differently. This is a personal decision. Figure out what you need easy access to and make it so. If you do all this work and you forget about these easy access items, it's almost gonna feel like a lot of your work was in vain. And so this to me is a big deal. So the 11th mistake I made is not making it easy to maintain. I've definitely gotten better at this, but for those of you, if this is your first time, you really need to come up with a system. I organize my closet by first clothing type, length, like sleeve length or hem length, and then color. You don't have to be as OCD as me. I had a friend one time who wanted to organize her clothing by outfits. That's not intuitive to me. For me, it's much easier to maintain if I do things by category. In my main closet, I have a dress section, I have a pant skirt section, and I have a section for tops and blazers. If somebody wanted to help me put away clothes in my items, as long as they put things in the right section, I would be able to do it by color. And I think that makes my life so much easier. I do Roy G. Biv, which is like the rainbow. That's extra credit. My recommendation for most people is just category and color. So if you have black dresses, all your black dresses go in one section. If you have jeans, they, they go in another section. If you have white tops, they all go in a section. I have a lot of items that are black with a print. I'll put them in the black print section. If you're ever confused about where to put something, look at the background of the print and that's where it should go. That allows you to maintain your closet easier. On to the results. When I started the closet clean out, my closet was my spring summer closet. So the colors were very bright and vibrant. I've now switched to a more neutral palette for fall and winter. I've also added more sweaters. In my spring summer closet, I had cut off shorts easily accessible. I've now moved them. Prior to this, all of my knits were put away. I've now brought out the knits. So in my coat closet, I purged a few coats. I have a few there for sale. I have a growing sneaker collection. I'm keeping my boxes in case some of the sneakers I want to resell. So I, I also have the sneakers stored up there. I did a little bit of arranging on the sneakers. I felt like they were looking a little chaotic. So I went in and I arranged that. In terms of my shoe closet, there wasn't much that needed to be be done except going in and like purging a few pair of shoes and dusting. Now for me, I didn't have to spend any money to clean out my closet because I had done it before. For your initial closet cleanse, I don't recommend spending more than $300. And primarily that's going to be spent on like slimline hangers and just like baskets to hold things. In my fall 2020 closet cleanse, I created a sneaker wall. I ended up purchasing 12 large open front container boxes from the container store. I was very happy with them. I ended up buying more sneakers and ended up needing 12 more. I have 25 sneaker containers. They can be a little bit costly. As my sneaker collection was growing, I would always purchase more and add to it. If you already have an existing sneaker collection and want to transition to these, I actually recommend waiting until the container store has them on sale because sometimes they're on sale for like 30% off. 
for my actual shoe wall, I use the Ikea Paxos. I'm very happy with that. The good thing about that is if my shoe collection were to expand or contract, I'd be able to change the shelving around to kind of have more space or less space depending on my needs. If it grew exponentially, I could definitely buy another cabinet and do a similar thing on another wall. On the Ikea Pack system, I've spent around $1,000. That was over time. I have a video about how I built my system and I will link that in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions about the results, but I'm super happy with my closet. In my next house, all of my clothes will live together Together, but currently this solution works great for the space constraints I have and that's my closet cleanse so those are the mistakes that I've made while cleaning out my closet let me know in the comments which mistake you're guilty of making all the time if you haven't checked out my original closet tour video I'm gonna link it here all right see you next time bye <laughs>